Now, normally here at the beginning of the video, I try to say something clever to get the attention of the viewers, but what can I say about this? I mean, it's a model brand I've never reviewed and a scale that I have never reviewed. So let's see what it's all about. So with that, hello and welcome to a new episode of Review, where we today will take a closer look at an Airbus A350-1000 of Virgin Atlantic. Now, this aircraft model was made by Premier Planes, and at the front of the box, we have a lovely image of the aircraft model. On the side, we have the Virgin Atlantic branding, and as we know, the bigger the number in the scale, the smaller the aircraft model is. And this model is in scale 1 to 250, so slightly smaller than the scale 200 models that we are used to from Herpa, for example, or JC Wings. Now, when it comes to the box design, I would say this is a fairly simple one, but I mean, it does its job. Job. Although I must admit, it does confuse me a lot because what we have learned over the years from Happer Wings is that if a box does not have a cutout, customers will not know what they are actually buying. And yet I'm sitting here in front of this box and I have no doubt what is in front of me. Very confusing. And the same thing goes for the backside where we don't have a cutout. No, we actually have useful information. So once again, we of course have the Virgin Atlantic branding. But then we actually have instructions as to how to assemble this aircraft model, because unlike Herpa's models, this model actually comes disassembled on purpose and you have to assemble the model yourself. All right, I've had my fun with Herpa now. Let's focus on this aircraft model because it actually deserves the attention on its own and not to be compared with Herpa all the time. So, as mentioned, the aircraft model does come disassembled. This also explains why the box is so much smaller than we are used to from any scale 200 aircraft model. It's not just because of the model being a little bit smaller, it is simply because it comes in its individual pieces and you have to assemble it yourself. Now, as you can see, it's difficult to show you here on camera. I struggled to really catch these uh, different steps so you could properly see how I assembled it. And the reason for that is mainly that I could not do it with one hand. And that's because most of these pieces have to be, well, applied with some force in order to get them in the right place. Which also means I don't really think this is a model that you will be disassembling again once you have assembled it. So putting it back in the box is probably something very few people will be doing once they have taken it out and assembled the model. So theoretically you of course could do it, but I would probably not recommend it. And especially because you need to apply some force to these pieces to put them together will mean that they will most likely wear out if you take them apart too many times. Now that we have assembled the aircraft model, we can of course take a closer look at the model itself. But before we do so, it is worth mentioning that this aircraft model does come with a stand and also with a lovely little print here at the bottom of the stand. All right, so here she is, the Airbus A350-1000 in the current standard livery of Virgin Atlantic, made by Premier Planes in scale 1 to 250. And as you of course can see, the very first detail we immediately notice is that this aircraft model does not have a landing gear. So the stand is of course very handy because otherwise it would be difficult to display this aircraft model. But now let us take a closer look to see what the model actually has to offer when it comes to detailing. And we start our tour around the aircraft model with a look at the tail section where we on the vertical stabilizer find the Virgin Atlantic branding. On top of the stabilizer, we then also find the two last letters of the registration code. We do also have a bit of detailing on the horizontal stabilizer. And on the fuselage, we then find the registration code of the aircraft. On top of the fuselage we then also have the addition of a sat dome which I always like to see when that is applied. And then towards the very tail of the aircraft we do also have a bit of detailing around the APU exhaust. At the front of the aircraft and across the fuselage, we then have the writing of Virgin Atlantic and we find the aircraft type specification. We also have the for Virgin Atlantic typical pinup girl with the Union Jack. However, underneath that, you usually would find the name of the aircraft. In this case, in real life, it would be Red Velvet, but here we don't have that printed on. Also, the detailing around the cockpit section is rather bare bone. We have the black mask around the cockpit windows and the cockpit windows themselves, but that's it. No window wipers, no static ports, no petal tubes. No additional detailing here. So that's a bit disappointing. When we then look at the engine cells, we can see they have been given the lovely red color of the Virgin Atlantic branding. We have the silver leading edge and the Rolls Royce logo. And what I especially like here is that we don't just have that logo on the outer side of the engines, 
but it has also been applied to the inner side, but we are missing any safety relevant markings here on these engines. Also, when we look at the physical detailing, I think, I mean, it is all right, but it is not nearly as detailed as we would see at, for example, scale 200 models from JC Wings or Harper Wings. In some cases, we would even have some movable parts here, which of course here is not the case either. Then we should also take a quick look at the wings, starting off with the top side, where we can see the different flaps, slats and spoilers have been carved out very nicely, but if you look for any printed details, well, you will have to look elsewhere. Like, for example, the underside. The physical detailing here is, I mean, it is okay, but I wouldn't say that it is great, but we do have the full registration code of the aircraft printed on here once more. And then, of course, we have the winglets with the A350. Now, I'm not super convinced about the physical detailing here. I think that looks slightly off for me, um, maybe a bit too thick. There's something about it that I'm not entirely sure about, but the print itself, I think, is very nice indeed on these winglets. Then on the belly, of course, we have a little hole here that is, of course, for the stand, so that's perfectly fine, and it doesn't intrude with any printed details, like, for example, here on the belly where we have the Virgin Atlantic writing once more. And then, of course, we also have the doors to the cargo compartments printed on, as we can see here at the back of the aircraft, and also here at the front of the aircraft. So there we have it, the Airbus A350-1000 in the standard livery of Virgin Atlantic by Premier Planes in scale 1 to 250, and what can we say about this aircraft model? Now, given that the aircraft model does not have a landing gear, this will most likely always be used as a display model, so it won't be appearing in any airport setups or something like that, which already excludes quite a few collectors. But of course, far from everyone, there are many collectors that exclusively collect models just like that. But is it good enough? Is it worth our time? And can it compete with, for example, SnapFit models from Happer Wings or the a little bit bigger models in scale 200? Now, there's of course always room to add more details. And this is definitely not the most detailed aircraft model, but there are a few details that have been left out, which I find a bit curious. Like, OK, they have left out the safety relevant markings on engines or static ports and stuff like that. That I can still kind of understand, but what is part of the livery is, for example, underneath the pinup girl having the name of the aircraft, and that they have left out, which I think is a bit strange. Now, when it comes to the make and feel, the quality of the aircraft model, I would say it is a mixed bag. There are definitely parts which look very nice, especially, for example, the horizontal and the vertical stabilizer, how that has been put together. You wouldn't uh, assume that you had slotted that in yourself. It just looks fine. But when we then look at the wings, for example, we have some marks here from the molding of that part. That's not so nice or when we see how it has been put into the fuselage. From some angles it looks fine, but from underneath that could look better. But okay, fair enough, how often do you see the model from underneath? But also when we look at the print, mostly it looks just fine, but there are also some imperfections here and there. So this is obviously not a high cost, high quality aircraft model and can therefore and should also not compete with scale 200 models from JC Wings or Harper Wings or the lot. No, this is definitely a cheaper option and very much competing with Harper Snapfit models. Now, hands down, I don't have much experience with Harper Snapfit models, but it is not my impression that they would have much more detailing than this model has. So the biggest question now is, of course, what does this model cost? Because that will really determine whether the state of the model is acceptable or not. And the simple truth here is I don't know how much it costs because I didn't buy this model. I was given it as a gift during an event with Virgin Atlantic Cargo. And I've made a video about that. If you are interested in that, you can check it out. It should pop up in the top right corner right now, or you can check it out in the link which is to be found in the video description below. But when I look at the internet, which I sometimes do. What I could find was that the model would retail somewhere in the ranges between 20 to 30, maybe 35 euros, but I would definitely not spend more on that model because that it is not worth. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for some larger scale aircraft models at more reasonable prices, but also can live with a few missing details here and there, then this could be a nice option for one's collection. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this a little bit different review. If you have so, then feel free to leave a like. That would be very much appreciated. And of course, if you are new around here, why not hit subscribe? That would be absolutely awesome. With that, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon again. I'm checking out and bye.